Now, we talked about the different cases, double G, negative, the reaction is spontaneous. about the free energy change for the system. Okay, and what we've done, we went from the business about the universe to the system when we redefine the delta G. And the other statement we made, And I want to contrast that to the enthalpy change. The enthalpy change is what we use to decide if uh, the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. state uh, number for the free energy change, we calculate it from the standard state free energy change by doing this thing. P0 represents the standard state uh, pressure, and in modern terminology, P0 is what? The standard pressure, one bar. So Basically, what that leads us to is that <coughs> non-standard state pressure. Interesting thing I wanted to bring up here again about units. If we're working in bars for the pressure, what number do we use for R? Somebody said 0, 08, but not close. Somebody else said 08206. I'm going to say wrong. Because the pressure unit, when we calculate that 0826, was what? Atmospheres. If I want R, where the pressure is bars, the relationship is. One atmosphere is 1.10325 bars, something like that. If I plug that number into that calculation, I would get 
meter bar. So this is the number we would use if we're using bar, but that's not the number your book uses. He introduces all these great definitions. The majority of the books always work with what? For their pressure units when you read their problems. Atmospheres. Okay? So the same thing, we, we run into this problem. I mentioned this, we were just getting this to in the 1A class, we're doing the gas laws. And I talk about old STP and new STP. Because the latest version of this textbook says the following for STP. The pressure is one bar. All the other textbooks still say the standard pressure when you're doing STP, it's one atmosphere. Okay? It makes a difference in your calculations. And it's consistent, but it's the only book that does that. I said the only difficulty arises is because in the past, instructors always expect you to remember what STP meant. So what does it mean? It means both of those. And so basically what I do in the 1A class is I'll either say new STP or old STP when I'm asking them to calculate things. But most of the time, if you're taking standardized exams and they expect you to remember STP, they haven't caught up to the new terminology, and that's the whole point I was trying to make here. He hasn't caught up to the new terminology, and this pressure unit has been standard in thermodynamics over two or three editions of this textbook, but he still does pressure problems when he does pressure, he does them in atmospheres. So lots of times you have these great modern definitions that everybody's supposed to use, and they revert back because they didn't revise the problem sets yet for the last 20 years to the old problem where they worked with the atmosphere pressure. And I don't think standardized exams say new and old STP, and I suspect when they say STP, notice it's just a suspect because I haven't had to take any of these new graduate records or whatever. But this, when I look at the exams that the exam institute puts out, they're still using old STP for their calculation. They say STP and they don't say old STP. Okay. So that's probably what we should use for the next two or three years until somebody catches them. Your textbook maybe is ahead of the curve. And so they're on the curve. This is just an aside to mention what we're going to do here. So if I were working in bars, this would be that 08314 number. If I were working in atmospheres, the old definition used to say P0 is one atmosphere. Okay. So coming back to this thing, I can calculate delta G uh, for a reaction. Here's my chemical reaction. I see this a lot of times. And I can say delta G for that reaction. I will see. Expand this out by using this definition equals small c g zero c right plus c r t l n p and by the way if I were working in activities or the molar concentration is what we use in place of activity we just put activity over standard state activity so we can apply this to solutions too but it's a lot easier to talk about pressures and so that's the way to do it. And we don't even have to know all of this, but eventually it's going to be something. So this is the pressure of gas C. In other words, all I do is expand this out and do this thing. So we have to be talking about the pressure, non-standard state of gas C. And then I'm going to have, whoops, what did I do here? I've changed my sign. I wasn't to change my sign yet. Plus RT. Okay.
this thing. Guess what that's equal to? It's delta G zero. Because it's delta it's G zero for the products, minus G zero for the reactants, multiplied by the coefficients, of course. That gives me delta G zero for the reaction. And what am I going to do next? And I'm going to do a little bit of algebraic sleight of hand. I'm going to move this to the inside as an exponent. Close. This is going to be RT, D up here. And since I'm subtracting, they go into the denominator. So this is delta G for the reaction. And this is delta G zero for the reaction, plus RT, LS plus C. This thing here is called what? Q, the reaction quotient. Because the ratio of the products raised to the appropriate powers based on the coefficients of the balanced equation, reactants to the powers of the reactants. So what I have now is And I said at equilibrium, Q is what? The equilibrium constant. If the system's at equilibrium, that number Q is what we call the equilibrium constant. You remember that from somewhere, don't you? We did that earlier this year, we said all of that. And so what I have is this side is zero because we're at equilibrium, and that's the criteria there, is equal to and if we rearrange this, and there's the relationship between free energy change and the equilibrium constant. That's really what we have to know, and that's over here on the page. Notice whatever you have to really know is in yellow print in the book. I just have to get to it. <coughs> or, whoops, that was the old book. The new book is in green. He's got a, a green box instead of a yellow box, and on page 841, there is equation 1913. That shows you the relationship between the free energy change and the equilibrium constant. Question? Again, at the top there, is that the like the natural law? Yeah, right here? Yeah, that's, that's a Q. In other words, the reaction quotient, because this is at non standard states, right? So I said this is delta G. At some non standard state, we just plug in the numbers in the reaction quotient. That would be the non equilibrium numbers. Remember that problem, which way does the reaction go? We calculate Q and compare it to the equilibrium constant. This is using that same principle, except not, but now I want to say at equilibrium, uh, Q is going to be called the equilibrium constant, and G for delta G for the reaction at non-standard states is zero. Okay. This statement over here Notice I, I mentioned this when I said this. I didn't put any superscript zeros. It also applies at standard state, but it applies at non-standard states also. And the only way you can get 
delta g equals zero is at some non-standard state. And then what that happened, as we said, it must be at equilibrium. So all I do is put that in and rearrange it. This is the equation you have to use to relate free energy changes to the equilibrium. What's left to do? Some problems. Oh, okay.